Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. I look like Mogatu. Don't I? Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hi friends! I am excited today because we're going to be trying out a purple hair mask and I want to see if it's going to do what it says it's going to do. I'm going to try this. This is a purple hair mask that, I mean, if you just look at the box, it shows you quite a huge difference on what it's supposed to be doing. My theory here is that if I'm using this hair mask, it's gonna work better than a traditional toner because I'm gonna be able to kind of concentrate where it goes versus a traditional toner, which, you know, you have to apply it on wet hair and it's thinner, so it's more liquidy, so it gets all over the place. So we're gonna try to use a brush and this hair mask to hopefully even out this yellowness that we got going on on the roots because it's, it's not the business. Got this, this the Bold Unio Unique. Unique, that is a Q, not an O. Bold Unique, a purple hair mask. So I've used this in the past, but as like an all over mask and I've never really done it as like a spot treatment mask, which sounds really weird to say, but I'm kind of excited. We're gonna see how this goes, hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then I will just dye my hair all a darker color so it kind of matches. Okay, this came with gloves, which I actually do appreciate because I know that this mask is real purple, like stain levels purple. It has a little booklet too, so let's see what it says. It says, you gotta read this. Focus, hello focus. Hello, Focus. You gotta read this. Think back to school. Purple is directly across from yellow on the color wheel, meaning that they cancel each other out. This revolutionary pigment. You know what? I want to learn how to do like like a voiceover voice so I can read some of these. Because every time I read these, I read them in like that. Think back to school. Purple is directly across from yellow on the color wheel, meaning that they cancel each other out. Like I just, I really want to master that. Okay, it says wash your hair first. No. Always use on clean hair. I'm not washing my hair. No, remove any product buildup. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm going to do this on dry hair. Tell dry and apply, do a strand test. I will do a strand test. Okay, so it says if you do too far, if you've overdone it, you can just use a normal shampoo a couple of times then we'll remove the violet tones and blow dry and straighten it. Any purple tones will miraculously evaporate, leaving you with your look you desired. Phew, panic over. I feel I'm gonna like end up not listening to this. It's a good thing I read the directions so I could ignore them. I feel like for my specific thing, it's not an all over toning, right? So it makes sense to not do this. I can understand why it would say to do this on wet hair, like if it was just an all over, but we're not doing all over. So I'm brushing out my hair right now so I can look like real cute. So when I brush it out, you could definitely see the difference between the roots and the length of my hair. Wow, that's a look. You know what I look like when I do this? Oh my God, I look like Mogatu, don't I? I gotta look it up now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Mogatu, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Okay, anyways, it looks like cotton candy. Oh my God, okay. That's scary. Ugh. That's really, really purple. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I think it'll be fine. Obviously, purple tones always look a lot scarier when you're doing these kind of things. So the main thing I'm gonna try and like pay attention to here is not trying to like blend it upwards because I think that's what I originally did. I was trying to like balayage my hair or something and it ended up looking like so silly because all it did was make the rest of it a lot darker. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna like really stick to doing the roots like this. That actually, there we go. Like that's a cool look. It looks like I have a headband. Like I'm like wearing like 80s hair or something. Oh my God, don't listen to me. This is where it's gonna be hard is this like this tiny crap. Do I do that first or do I should I do that last? Because I feel like it's the majority down here, it's all growth. Because when I originally got my hair cut, you know, they do a, 
I don't even know if she did a fade. I think she just buzzed it just completely, except for like right up here. So I feel like I should be pretty okay getting most of this for the most part. I apologize to every single hairstylist out there. The amount of videos that I've made that have probably just made people who have actually taken the time to learn how to do hair just, they just shake their heads at me in shame. I know, I know. Listen, we all have our things that we think we can do ourselves. <laughs> and mine is hair. I think I can do it. So for my haircut, basically what I'm thinking is Damn, every time I look in there, I'm like, wow, this is really what I look like right now. It's like I feel stuck with it, you know what I mean? Because it's all on the top, which is a given. I mean, that's mostly any pixie cut's going to be all on the top. But because the sides have been so buzzed, it's frustrating because they're like these just fluffy things right now, right? Which is really not fun. It's either like buzzed or not. And I'm just having this point where I'm like, what do I, how do I grow this out? And I think that the main thing I need to do is cut the top shorter and not like a lot shorter. Trust me, I understand it's already really short, but shorter in the sense that it, it doesn't feel like when it's straight, I always feel like I have to keep it onto one side because it's too long to like be pushed forward like a normal pixie where you can kind of just have it going in all sorts of directions. I might not be able to leave it as curly. I don't know. I'm not mad if I have to straighten it, like it's not the end of the world, but the way that it is right now, it does not work when it comes to straightening it. The girl who cut it last time did not know what she was doing. So like the back, the pieces are this long. Like when I left the salon, she had it brushed down. So it just looked like this really, like a three-year-old did a bowl cut, but it was already done. So what was I gonna say? And I'm, I'm not one, like I'm really bad when it comes to confrontation. So I'm the person that leaves the salon going, yeah, it looks great. And then I get in my car and want to cry. It also is because I, I've also, you know, learned a lot of the times if I style it the way that I normally style it, I end up liking it a little bit more. So I, do, I, I'm, I try not to judge too quickly when it comes to that because there's been a lot of times where it ends up being okay once I styled it myself. I mean, even when I had first gotten it done and it was straightened, I was like, I don't know how I feel, but you know what it is, what it is. But when I had got left it curly, I was like, oh, this is actually really cool and really, really unique. We all have our own hair preferences and a stylist can only do so much. And I, I totally understand that. And a lot of times stylists give me ideas that I never would have had. I really hope that this works. Otherwise I will just make it darker. That's the beauty of it being short too, is that you can damage it and it doesn't matter because it's gonna just cut it off or it's gonna grow back. It's all good. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. I think what this is, is I decided to film a video when I am like loopy tired. I could not fall asleep last night. I don't know what was going on, but I fell asleep at like 3.30 and then woke up at 8.30. And then we've been packing all day, preparing to list our house, preparing to move, and it's just a lot. If you are on TikTok, you've probably heard people talking about executive dysfunction, which is a new one that I've learned, but it's basically when you know, you're trying to do something and you're like, you feel paralyzed. Like you want to clean, you want to pack, you want to purge all the things in your house, and you just can't. It's incredibly frustrating, and it's where I've been for a little while. I realized what helps me is audiobooks and podcasts. And for some reason, it's like I knew that, but I still wouldn't even do that. But the second today I put on podcasts and I put on uh, Rhett and Link's Ear Biscuits. And I got a ton done today. So I'm just kind of trying to remember that for the rest of time. Hoping I got these back areas. I can't see. I don't care if the roots are darker than the rest of the hair. That's fine with me. What I care about is when the roots are lighter and awkward. I mean, if you think about most people, most people, if they're dyeing their hair blonde, their roots are darker than whatever blonde they're going for. And it looks fine. But when it's yellow or it's lighter, that's not the business. That's always what issues that I had when it came to making my hair darker because my natural color is an ash blonde. So most of the time, if my hair was darker, you could see, like it looked like I was balding because my hair was lighter. So it ended up looking clear, which is again, not really what I'm going for. With this, if the roots are a little bit darker, I'm not gonna be mad at it because I'd rather the roots be a little bit more of like a silvery, a dark silver color than not. Okay, I feel like we've done a decent job. I'm going to go ahead and like do a circle and hope I've gotten all of the back of my hair. I actually have zero idea. Okay, I'm actually very glad that I did that because there are two gigantic holes on either side of my head that 
do not have anything. <laughs> like everything looked okay, except there's these giant two like holes. Okay. Come on, there we go. So how long am I supposed to leave this in? For shimmering platinum silver or ash gray tones, leave on for 10 to 20 minutes. Hi, I'm gonna leave it on. God, I look like a hot mess. You are welcome internet, because I know this is the content you signed up for. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it on just for like probably another minute because I can, like this stuff works really fast. Like I said, I'm not gonna be mad if it makes my roots and stuff gray because that's fine with me. I will say we definitely, there's some pieces in the back here that are gonna be a little bit darker than the rest, but it's okay. I'm gonna go start my shower, rinse this out and I will come back and we can see how it worked. So I just rinsed it out and I got too scared clearly because as you can see, it's still yellow. Less yellow, but still yellow. It definitely made a difference, but it's not enough. I've only shampooed, I didn't do conditioner, so I think what I'm gonna do is now that it's wet, do a second round of this and leave it on for a little bit longer because like I said, I'm okay if it's too dark on the roots. I'm not okay if it's too dark on the top. I think I'm gonna do another round of it, leave it on a little bit longer because I definitely got nervous. It really was only on maybe for 10 minutes total and this side was probably even less. That way we can get this to be a little bit more of a darker color. <laughs> All right guys, so <laughs> I totally forgot to film after re-putting the conditioner in and all that stuff. And then I got my haircut yesterday, woo! But let me just get to the, the nitty gritty of this. So I did another round of the conditioner and I left it in for longer and it still was not enough. So then I used an actual toner. I used Wella T18. That's kind of like the standard at Sally's. It's the lightest pale blonde toner. So I used that and that definitely helped. You can see up here, it's still a little bit yellow. We're still not there. I mean, it's still very at home hair dyeing, I know, but it's a lot closer. I still, what I'm gonna do since I got my hair buzz, like the back's all buzzed and stuff, once I wash my hair, I'm going to just do the whole back with toner and just leave it so that it just really nukes out all of that brassiness. But bottom line is that no, the deep conditioner on its own is not going to be enough when you have hot roots. I think that the deep conditioner, that one specifically would be fantastic if you got your hair professionally done and it was all one tone, it was all even, you weren't trying to be cheap like me and getting, doing the roots yourself. I think that it would be a great way to do like a refresh to really tone your hair to be a more ashy, less brassy color. But as far as like spot treatments go, I'm not sure that it's the way. I was really hoping because it is a little bit easier to place than like a toner is because you know, a toner is much more liquidy so it is a little bit harder to get it to like exact places, but it's just not strong enough. So I think that it works well as like an overall balance and an overall like to hone out any brassiness, but when it's super, super brassy, like mine is like freshly bleached, it's not enough. That's pretty much the end of that video. Hopefully it made you laugh. I know it was silly. I apologize to everyone who is a hairstylist who had to watch that because I know it was cringy, but that's kind of my impulsive nature is to just completely fuck up my hair. And you know what? Everyone has a vice. Everyone has a thing. Mine is my hair. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.